It might seem like I get a lot done between YouTube and my career in data science. But honestly, it's taken me years to build systems that help me to optimize my health, my happiness, and my time. From my perspective, I really still have a long journey in front of me in regards to personal improvement. One thing that I have found is that collecting and analyzing my own data has dramatically improved my quality of life. In this video, I'll walk through what data I collect, what tools I use to collect it, and how I analyze my own personal data. I really hope that this helps you to think about your life and your data through a slightly different lens. At the end, I'll also talk about a few of the different projects that I'd like to do with my own data, so be sure to stay tuned for that. The first area where I collect my own personal data is on my daily tasks. I track what I need to do, when I need to do it, and at what stage of completion it's at. I do all of this tracking and organization on Notion, and Notion happens to be the sponsor of this video. Most people know Notion as a note-taking app, but it is so much more than that. This is the homepage that I use to track my own workflow. I also use Notion to communicate and manage my team that produces the Ken's Nearest Neighbors podcast. I really love that Notion is customizable and I can create an interface that allows me to see all of the relevant data that I need to use every day very easily. Notion is also free to sign up with my link in the description. As you can tell from the systems that I've created for myself, my data tracking system in Notion is very similar to that of a database. The to-do lists are great, but the table format honestly allows me to capture significantly more data and put it to use. Something I've been doing more recently is looking at how long it takes me to complete a task. I find that I have a bad habit of pushing things off and eventually potentially abandoning them. My analysis suggests that I tend to do this more with email reach outs than with any other type of tasks. Perhaps it's time for me to hire a virtual assistant or to put some other system in place to get me to be more responsive in general. Along with my to-do list, I also track my daily habits that I've aligned to my goals. My tasks, which I mentioned as being the first thing I track, they change every day. But these habits that I also track are things that I repeat almost every day. Some things that I measure are first, the number of deep work hours that I do each day. This concept is from the book Deep Work by Cal Newport. I really recommend it if you're struggling with focus. I also track if I've partaken in, in any exercise, whether it's yoga, hiking, biking, gym, golf, whatever that might be. And I also track if I read during that day. I'm always interested in what other people track on a daily basis, so let me know what you track in the comment section below. These metrics might sound a little vague, but admittedly, tracking a lot of stuff can be pretty burdensome. I've found that for the most part, tracking if I've done activities rather than how long I've done them or anything like that keeps me aware of them without it being annoying to keep track of them. You'll also notice that I'm focusing on tracking the metrics that I have complete control over rather than my big picture goals. This is something I picked up from the Four Disciplines of Execution, another really good book, and it's something that helps me to stay motivated. I know that I can knock these things off a list if I just do them. Something like pursuing income or followers or whatever that might be, those aren't things I have direct control over and focusing too much on those can be a little bit demotivating. I'm in the process of starting this tracking in Notion as well, and it'll be really nice to have all my metrics in one place. If there's enough interest, I might also release a Notion template or something so that you can track things in the same way that I do. I will say how I do it probably isn't the best way, but it is a way. <laughs> If you know me, you know that I love to read, and there have been quite a few books that have changed my life in the past. One that I read a few years ago was called Why We Sleep. Essentially, it talks about how sleep is the linchpin for us to maximize our potential. You've probably seen me wearing this ring, and it's, trust me, it is not a fashion statement. It is in fact one of the most advanced consumer sleep tracking products on the market. I use this to track my sleep quality and my general activity and I'm constantly experimenting with different activities that can help to improve my night's rest. So far, my analysis has led to some pretty interesting behavioral changes on my part. First, I don't sleep with my phone in my room anymore. And secondly, I've stopped drinking caffeine after around 2 p.m. I found that these were the largest detractors from a good night's sleep for me. Having this data allows me to do these little micro experiments that have a really strong positive impact on my overall health. 
I really recommend doing these types of small experiments with your data, trying things and seeing if your hypothesis matches what happens in your sleep data or your health data or your food data or whatever it is. The last major area of my life that I routinely track is my mental health. I think it's important to be introspective with yourself and honest with stress and other factors contributing to your life. At night, I like to track a few things that I think are important related to my mental state of each day. The things that I write down are from the book High Performance Habits, and I rank my mental clarity, my productivity, my energy levels, my influence, how much necessity I feel in the day, and how much courage I feel each day. I also write down things that I'm grateful for, things I've learned each day, and what I would like to have improved upon during the course of that day. Aside from the major things I track, I also have quite a few notes that I take, whether it's regarding my podcast episodes, plans for YouTube, YouTube video ideas. These are all technically considered text data, although many would believe them to be uh, very unstructured data. Some things I also find tremendous value in are my YouTube data, my newsletter data, and my LinkedIn data. These are more to optimize my content, my value to others, and my reach than to optimize my own personal life or health though. Before I touch on some of the projects I'd like to do with my own data, I wanna make an important point about collecting your own data. Sometimes it's enough just to aggregate this information. The act of collecting data in and of itself can be valuable. By collecting data, you're bringing awareness to that area of your life. Just bringing awareness to something is often enough to change your behavior in a positive way. For example, I don't check my sleep data nearly as much as I used to, but just the feeling of the ring on my hand is a constant reminder that sleep's important to me. It might sound super cliche, but the old adage, what gets measured gets managed, rings really true in these scenarios. This is one of the reasons that I think the 66 days of data has been so much of a success. By tracking your progress and creating these habits, you're far more conscious and intentional about your data science learning journey. If you're not familiar with that initiative, I've linked it in the card above and then the description below. This isn't to say that the analysis of your data isn't important though. Here are a few of the things that I'd like to better understand about my own data. So first, I wanna see the relationship between my sleep data and my mental health check that I do each day. I think this would likely reinforce my belief about the importance of sleep. Next, I'd like to better understand the relationship with my habits and my tasks. So my habits are the things that I do each day and my tasks are the one-off things that I do each day. And I wonder if I do more habits, if I'm likely to do more tasks, or if I do less habits, I'm likely to do more tasks. In theory, with based on time, I, I should be doing more tasks when I do less habits, but I have a hypothesis that it might be the other way around. The third thing I'd like to see is if there are any recurring themes about what I could improve upon each day. Anecdotally, I probably write that I should have gone to bed on time or that I should have done yoga that day as my top two but there could be some other interesting findings from what I write each day. I hope this video helped you to look at your own data in a new light. As usual, thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.